from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. How are you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now, here's Wendy! Thank you for watching our show! Say hello to my co-host. My studio audience. Oh boy. I got a lot of explaining to do. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. in life, I only have about three more falls before it's never going to recover. <laughs> I'm the first one who hits the alarm 5.30 in the morning, I wake up the house, the dog, my guys, the whole bit. Well, we got one of those, like a sunken family room, so it's only two steps down. You know how sometimes you have your slippers on and things are slippery and then you fall, but then you try to catch yourself so your head doesn't clunk into the tile? <laughs> Ow, I fell on my tailbone, I scraped up my arm, so part. It's okay, it's okay. I know this is really hood, but I'm good, I think. Anyway, um, we have more information on Prince's death for you. But first, I wanted to explain briefly why I only talked about Prince this much on Friday's Hot Topics. And the reason why is because for many of you, particularly my co-hosts, you know the schedule. We, I, I got a three-day weekend. Oh. Okay. So, generally, generally speaking, the way the schedule uh, works here at Wendy is we're live out of New York at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then Friday's show is taped on Thursdays at 1.45. So, by the time I found out about Prince, um, I was holding court with the Hot Topics Bureau in my office getting ready for Friday's show, which is a taped show. And all their phones are going off, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm just like, okay, all right, we're going over the stories we're gonna talk about on Friday, but wait a minute, this thing with Prince, is this a hoax? Like, what is going on? Literally, the Bureau was holding court in my office, chairs were flying, people were crying. I was like, everybody calm down, this could be a hoax. Next thing you know, because I had the chew on mute, because I'm trying to hear, but I love the chew, but it was on mute. <laughs> Next thing I see, George Stephanopoulos interrupts the chew to say that Prince has passed away. Aww. Well, you know, I uh, cannot process. I was not able to process at that point. I'm looking at the clock. I'm hearing music going on here in the rafters of our studio. Our guests are, you know, my co-hosts are now inside. The Here's Wendy man is all lined up to say, here's Wendy. And I did not really understand how to process it. I mean, you know, when you think about some of the great people from the past who have passed away, sometimes you squint and you say, I could kind of see that coming. You know, whether it is a Whitney Houston or a Michael Jackson or something like that. I did not see the passing of Prince coming uh, at all. I mean, this is a man, he ate a vegan, he ate grass, basically. <laughs> Never did drugs, you know, was not a drinker. He, he didn't, I curse like a sailor. He tells me, Wendy, don't curse. <laughs> You're too beautiful for that. 
Okay, so that's why I didn't say anything. I was just shocked. I didn't really know how to react. So all I could say was mourning the loss of Prince. And you know, for those of you who tried to come for me on my social media, you can't tell people how to mourn. So there. Now, I know over the weekend, I saw Purple Rain like four times on TV, right? And Saturday Night Live, you did a fantastic job with the Prince legacy. But you know, in thinking back to, um, you know, and I've only, I only had two encounters with Prince, but both times I was summoned to him. And so, like I told you, when you're summoned, for some people, you just stay in the bed. <laughs> but when Prince calls, honey, you go. Even when your alarm is gonna go off on a work day at 5.30 in the morning. And now it's nine o'clock at night, I'm getting a phone call, Prince wants to see you by 11 at the club. It's a weekday. So I'm like, okay, give me some leather jeans. <laughs> you know, cause you gotta be cool, I'm going to see Prince. You know, give me something cool and, and let me, you know, jump in my costume and go. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. Okay, toothpicks right now. Cause, cause he called me out of bed. And we're at the club, but you know I love the club, so you know I have my drink. <laughs> and his, his, the, the people at the club put me in a particular position. So I'm not even in the club in the club, I'm more like in the waiting area. And me and my husband are sitting there and there's stairs where you descend. It's now midnight, honey. <laughs> Nothing, give me another drink. <laughs> it's now 12.30, 12.45. 1.10 in the morning, I see an entourage coming down the steps. But you know, he was a little man. <laughs> so everybody was taller than him. So they come down the steps, then the seas departed. And he came right over to me and my husband. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a gracious host. Like he didn't just invite me, just to, you know, sit there like a lummox. Cause you know, sometimes you get invited places, but then, but then the host ignores you. No, he comes right over and he's, he, how do you do? We meet, I stand up, but he, you know. He, <laughs> and he had the afro and no sunglasses, no sunglasses. And I stood up and I shook his hand and he came in for a hug. And when I hugged him, he smelled like, mm. <laughs> so good. Not over perfumed or cologne just the perfect scent of like lilacs and lilies and flowery. And he holds my hand, soft hands by the way. I felt like if I squeezed him too hard, the skin would slide off and fall on the floor <laughs> and I'd be left with bones in my hand. Okay, so he takes my hand and he, he was really respectful to my husband, but he took my hand and he's like, come in this room. <laughs> so we go in a room within the club, right? The music is soft toned so we can actually hear each other talk, but we still had to sit close, okay. Black walls, black carpet, black ceiling, black furniture, a small room, leather furniture, okay. There's one beautiful girl in there, beautiful. Turns out this was his girl at the time, but she sat over there. Oh. Prince sat right next to me. When I say right next to, I mean hip to hip. So, you know, Kevin's on the other side of me, hip to hip. But Prince is dictating seating, okay. So he tells his girl, you, you know, you move there and tells Kevin respectfully, you move there. <laughs> and Wendy, you stay right here. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. We talked about art and skincare and not music. We didn't talk about music, but just stuff. And he watches our show. Well, he. By the way, I'm making this the Prince chair. Yeah. yeah. I want my art director, Michael Lee, to make like a, a, a secret plaque that's right back here. You know, in, in gold, Michael Lee. You know, in gold. Um, and, and, and put it back here, it's, it's, um, it's gonna be the Prince chair. And then the second time I met him, I caught the Holy Ghost. 
I thought I was gonna be thrown out. Okay, so the second time is, okay, Michael Jordan is having an all-star weekend party. It's going on in about three hours. I'm like, yeah, I heard about it. Prince wants you there. I'm like, okay, so here I am in the bed. <laughs> Wig on the floor. I'm like, okay, let me jump into my leather jeans because I want to be cool. No, um, I jumped into a thigh high boots and a tight black dress. And, and so now here we go again, all right? It's midnight. I don't think it was a work night though. I don't remember. That was a good time. You know, <laughs> you know when you don't remember it's a good time? So, okay, so it was Michael Jordan's party. All-Star Weekend was going on here in New York. Uh, the masses had no idea that Prince was performing, but Prince let me know he was performing. I guess maybe Michael Jordan knew that also. By the way, I never met Michael Jordan, but I met him that night at the party. He watches our show too. How you doing, Michael? <laughs> and so, okay, so again, Prince is the gracious host. First of all, before he performed, I had to go to the bathroom. I never go to the bathroom in the club. I hate, when it's time for me to go to the bathroom, I'd rather just go home. You know what I'm saying? Because nothing good happens in a bathroom in a club. <laughs> but I had to go. I said, well, it's a Prince party. It's probably safe. So his people escorted me to a special bathroom. And on the way to the bathroom, there was Prince waiting to talk to me. So it was like an ambush. <laughs> so I'm like, how do you do? <laughs> it's, nice to, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> right? Right? When you grow up, you know, regular, like I'm Wendy from Jersey. And sometimes great things happen in life. And I'm like, I have to look at myself like, who am I? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, using, I'm using Prince's bathroom. Prince just said hello. He asked me, was my, was my seating proper? He told me which couch. Yes, he's big on organizing who sits where, okay? <laughs> so he wanted me to sit right off the stage on a couch. Like, all the other slobs in the club were either standing <laughs> or sitting on hard stuff like crates. Me and Kev, we're on a couch, like Liberace style, you know, with that gold gilding on the back. And I'm sitting, and Prince is up there to, you know, you got the look, you know, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. So all of a sudden, I caught the Holy Ghost. And right in front of me, there were about eight stairs. All I had to do was climb them and be on the stage. And I, he didn't invite me, but he, I invited myself. <laughs> so I jump on stage and I do all this. And, and you know, there were some people that I knew who were not with us, but ended up being at the club and they took the footage and magically, all the footage had disappeared from their phones, so I have nothing to show you. I'm telling you, Prince was really mystical and, and weird, but aren't we all weird? You will be missed, Prince. Yes. Talk about Beyonce and Lemonade. So, I was in the house on Saturday night at nine o'clock. I have no idea why. I, well, I know what I was doing. I was pre preparing for a brand new episode of Scorn Love Kills on the ID channel. That comes on at 10. <laughs> so, so I, I was busy. Anyway, um, but the Bureau watched and they said it, it's, a, it's a, a visual album featuring brand new music. And there she is with her baseball bat and apparently it was like a two hour situation um, on the HBO. And the first 45 minutes, you know, um, the Bureau was not Im impressed, my Hot Topics Bureau. But then all of a sudden they were impressed because it seemed like she was playing out lyrics implying Jay-Z cheated and she said things like he only wanted me, want, want me when I'm not there um, and he better call Becky with the good hair. <laughs> well, people are thinking the Becky that he's reporting about or she's reporting about is that fashion designer, Rachel Roy. Oh. 
the woman who. Reportedly was at the center of the elevator fight. Um, and Rachel added fuel to the fire by posting um, a caption talking about good hair, don't care on her social media. Now, Rachel Roy, why are you even, wow, we just showed the most beautiful co-host of the day. Oh, what, did you see, oh, you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> that is how you do it. Um, anyway, so um, Rachel Roy, you, you, first of all, you're not this fighting girl unless you're on Beyonce and Jay-Z's payroll and they paid you to mix it up to add you know, more, I guess, sales for this lemonade. Quite frankly, I wish that Beyonce held off on this whole album until Prince. You know, until the, this entire weekend kind of blew over. And Beyonce, I mean, uh, Bill Cosby, don't get beside yourself because long after Prince is gone and Beyonce and Jay-Z are still together, we're gonna circle back around and still deal with you. It is. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes people feel that when, when a big story happens yes. that you're gonna forget about their story. Right, we're not forgetting about No, no, about that's you, what Bill. pen and paper are for. <laughs> nope, I take my ginkgo below, but I remember a lot. <laughs> You'll be back, Bill Cosby. But back to you, Rachel Roy. All right, so the Beehive attacked Rachel Roy's Wikipedia page. <laughs> Look, the Beehive says, first of all, they said that she died on April 23rd under a lemonade stand. I mean, occupation, Becky with good hair. What is going on? They're also swarming. Okay, Rachel Roy does sound like the name of Rachel Ray. Okay, my neighbor here in the building. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. Her studio's right below this, so you know, when I stomp, then she, you know, she gets her broom and hits me back. Anyway, so they're swarming on our neighbor, Rachel Ray. Similar name, but not the same thing. Like, leave this nice white lady alone. Really? But Rachel Ray is no dumbbell. She used the moment for the beehive to swarm to uh, put out a delicious recipe for lemonade. <laughs> so good. So good. So stupid. Let's move along. You ever fall on your tailbone? This is my second time doing it. The first time was like five years ago. But boy, what a difference five years make when you're about to be 52. Like I can't, like I can't take it. But I can't, I can't take it. Well, Paris Hilton's back on the market. Well, this is what happens. So according to Life and Style magazine, Paris and her boyfriend, Tom Gross, who's worth about $350 million, looks like, if you squint, looks like a cleaned up, more handsome version of Juicy Joe from Jersey. <laughs> right? Just a little bit. Okay. Anyway, they've called it quits. They've only been dating for a year. Reportedly, um, they couldn't make the long distance thing work. Well, nobody can. No matter how much money you have, no matter how many planes you have to get on and cars and stuff, he's based in Switzerland where he's a czar of something. And she's based in L LA. Plus she's got her residency coming up uh, this summer in Ibiza. You know, she's still a DJ. 
Now, Paris is 35 years old. You know, quite frankly, you know, in our Hot Topics meeting, half the room does not see Paris as being married or being a mother. But you know what? There are a lot of people who you don't picture being a mother until you see them for the first time holding that baby. Then you're like, oh my gosh, she's a mom. Um, and at 35 years old, Paris has said time and time again, if you, if you are one of her beehive, then you know. Um, <laughs> She, she always talks about how she wants to be married and she wants to have children and she talks like a baby already, so. <laughs> I just I feel like if you have the money to be able to sacrifice for love, then she should sacrifice for love just to figure out what's all going on with this guy. I'm not saying she should move to Switzerland, but she should at least give it a chance. Because 35 is not um, old, but it's also not young. And you know, Paris, you gotta make some, do you know who I ate with the other day? Okay, so random. I had lunch at Barney's, Fred's, at Barney's with Andre Leon Talley. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, for those of you who know anything about fashion, you know Andre was the editor of Vogue magazine for 30 years of his life. He's also the go-to, per he's like a curator of everything fashion. I mean, he, um, his best friend is a princess in Germany Although I couldn't tell that at lunchtime, I felt like his best friend. <laughs> I mean, and it was only the two of us, like no extras, no extras. It was just the two of us, right? So I get to lunch and Andre's already sitting there. Now mind you, I invited him for lunch, you know, just, just, you know, oh, by the by, we met for the first time like three weeks ago um, in the banquette um, over champagne at Naomi Campbell's party. Remember I told you that like it was a really fabulous party and I met Andre and the next thing I know, Andre's, uh, you know, you know, you know, calling and stuff. And so I said, well, let's go for lunch. And so we went for lunch. So I walk in and he's already sitting. So um, he drinks his water bubbly. I'm not really a bubble, I'm a flat, but I, I, did, I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to criticize, so I put up with the bubbles. And out of a blue bottle, I don't know the brand. Anyway, so we're sitting there, right? It's, it's like a two hour lunch, because we're luxuriating. It's Friday, the boy is in school, nobody has to work, and you know, I told you I have a three day weekend. So, first thing he asks me when I sit down, do you remember last week I was telling you that Jennifer Lopez um, and I whispered something about Mariah on the couch? for which I told you I would never tell you what it was, but Andre asked, so I told him. Like he, he, wa he watches our show. Hi Andre, good morning. So now look, so now look. So we're sitting there, we're having a great time. I got on my leather jeans, I feel cool. <laughs> I feel cool, right? Like 45 minutes into eating and he'd ordered wine and we both had salads and we're just sitting and the place is filling up. And I, I love department store eating because it's really like a ladies who lunch thing. Like eating at a department store is totally different than eating at a restaurant. So 45 minutes into it, first of all, he's holding court with everybody. This man knows so many people. I was just a fly on the wall. People are coming over, hey Andre, but each time he'd be like, and this is Wendy and you know, but, but back to Andre, right? 45 minutes in walks Vera Wang. Oh. Well, now, now look, I never met Vera Wang. I wear her clothes from Kohl's. <laughs> yes, I do. So I'm sitting there with Andre and he's telling me all these juicy stories for which none I will repeat for you. And I'm giving him juicy stories. Some you know, others you never will. And then Vera walks over and they hug and stuff. And next thing I know, she's telling me she watches our show and she loves it and you know, stuff. And so she's eating, anyway, it was just, thank you Andre for the wonderful time. Vera, very, very nice to meet you. <laughs> what a mess. So, um, I have some big news. Suzanne's involved in this caper. <laughs> you will all have a chance to win a trip to Mexico during Wendy's vacation giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. Mexico.
as hell. It's fabulous. Starting this Thursday and for the entire month of May, we'll be calling Lucky Wendy Watchers live on the air. And if you correctly uh, can answer a question about the show, then you could win a fabulous trip to Mexico. We're gonna fly you and a guest um, to one of five luxurious, inclusive palace resorts located in Mexico's Caribbean coast. It's fabulous. You'll enjoy beaches and, and beautiful fine dining and an exciting nightlife. Just log on to my Facebook page to enter and make sure that you watch our show every day, every nuance, because you might be getting the call. <laughs>